okay so in this video we're going to discuss about um a grid inverter okay so we're going to solve one problem and the problem reads consider the grid inverter given in figure question seven below and then answer the question that follow note that the gti is connected to the ac grid through an inductance xm other sources and loads on the DC and AC bus are not shown. Okay, so we have a grid tie inverter here. So this side here, we have a DC bus. Okay, it is connected to a DC bus. And then this side here, we have an AC bus. And we know that an inverter converts a DC voltage to AC uh, voltage. Okay, so this idea is an input from the DC source. So this could be a solar. Okay. And then this inverter converts that DC voltage to AC voltage. And this AC voltage is fed in the system, which is a AC system which is a, through the AC bus. And the, on the other side, we have also a generator that's generating the AC voltage. And it's also fed into the same AC bus. Okay, so first of all, what is a grid tie inverter? Okay, so this is a type of a power inverter that converts direct current to electric. Uh, to, to AC current, right? Okay. So what it is that uh, maybe there is this particular place or maybe a house, they have, okay, a small um, power station, quite a power station though. Maybe, okay, your house, you have solar power, you are generating more than enough. Okay, so what you need to do, you say, okay, this is more than enough for us. What you're going to do, we're going to send it back to the what? To the utility company, the company that supplies power in your country. Okay, so how are you going to connect to the main grid? Because you need to sell that power or need to transport that power to the main grid. So what do you do? Okay, you convert it right from DC to AC through an inverter. And this is a special kind of an inverter, which is called a grid tie inverter. So for you to be able to export that power, maybe to give that power to the grid. What do you do? You need to make sure that it, you synchronize with the grid power, isn't it? Okay. So what does it mean synchronizing? Make sure that, it, okay, that power you need to give to the grid or you are sending to the grid. You are, it, it has the same frequency as it, the frequency of the main grid, right? Or the same voltage. So these two must be the same. So let's say the, the utility company is supplying power to the community at 230 volts or at 400 volts, whatever voltage, make sure also your inverter also is giving that output, okay? As you are feeding to the main system, make sure you're also feeding it at what, 230 volts. If it's the frequency for the utility company is 50 hertz, you also make sure that your inverter also supply that power with the same frequency. So that is what you mean, synchronization. Okay, so between the AC bus and the inverter, there is this um, reactance or kind of impedance XM. Okay, so I was mentioning about the grid tie inverter. So make sure that your grid tie inverter and um, the utility company, there is some com compatibility. Okay, so we're going to look at a problem here. So the first question says, um, what is the purpose of the inductance between the inverter and the AC grid? Okay, what is the main purpose of the inductance between the inverter and the, the AC grid? As you can see here between there's a, an inductor, okay, with the reactance XM, right? So what could be the purpose of that? So the inductance allows the internal inverter voltage to be somewhat different from the voltage at the what at the ac bus okay so the internal voltage which is the inverter voltage to be somewhat different from the voltage at the ac bus okay so can you imagine in a situation okay can you imagine remember that this inverter is also feeding the current right in this ac bus right now can you imagine that this inverter is at 100 volts just an example right Okay, 
and this one also is at 100 volts. And you know the nature of the current, the current flows from high potential to low potential. So if these two are the same potential, okay, if they are the same potential, then there will be no flow of current, isn't it? Okay, so this XM, this inductance here, make sure that it enables like, okay, to make sure that it, these voltages are somehow different. Okay, but not very much different. Okay, maybe just an allowance of five, vol or five volts or three volts so that they, to allow the current to flow. Okay, so of course you can see that you, since this inverter is feeding into this uh, system, you need to make sure that okay the inverter is at a higher potential as compared to the what to the system itself, isn't it? So this is the main reason why I have to put to have to put it, the decoupling what uh, impedance here. Okay, just to make sure that it, it creates a potential difference between the two systems. So AC bus and the inverter they should be at a different potentials. In order to allow the current to flow in the in one direction okay because if they are at the same potential no current to be able to flow okay so that's the main reason why we have this inductance here okay now let's uh look at the numerical problem okay so the first part of the problem says uh, now set the generator line to neutral output voltage and the internal inverter line to neutral voltage respectively as okay so we are told that eh, the generator voltage okay is equal to vg at what angle zero degrees and then the inverter voltage is at v inverter at angle uh, sigma so where sigma is the angle between the inverter voltage and the generator voltage okay know that the current okay which is the inverter current from the inverter to the ac bus can be written as okay so i inverter is equal to v inverter minus vg over the impedance right okay you see that the v inverter is at that potential minus the voltage which is at lower potential which is what the voltage of the bus ac bus system and then divide by the impedance across it you have the current right so this is what we have here okay so we have to determine the expression for the real power and reactive power produced from the single phase inverter okay so we have to find this that expression for the real power and the reactive power and that is the complex power okay so let's go ahead and see what you can do so what are we given okay so solution so we are told that oh the vg the generator voltage which is the phaser is that equal to vg at angle zero Degrees, right? And this you can write this in rectangular form as what? Vg cosine angle, which is zero, plus j sine angle, which is zero. So this is just equal to Vg. Okay. We also told the inverter voltage, V inverter, is equal to this is a phasor. Okay, is equal to Vg magnitude of Vg at angle sigma, right? And also this can be written in what? Rectangular form as Vg cosine sigma plus J sine sigma. Okay? Alright, so we are told to find the power, real power and the reactive power. So the combination of the two is called the complex power, right? So complex power divided by S is equal to V times C, the conjugate of the current, right? Okay? So, which voltage here, since we're talking about the inverter, is V inverter voltage times I inverter current. The complex, I mean the conjugate of the word, I inverter current. Okay? Alright, so let's make the substitution here. So, S is equal to V inverter. Okay? And then, what is I inverter? So, we are, from the problem, we're starting to be given that the inverter current is equal to V inverter minus Vg divided by, okay, the reactance. So, I inverter, current from the inverter is equal to the voltage of the inverter minus the voltage of the what? The generator divided by the impedance. Okay, so let's substitute this. Since we need the conjugate, so I'm going to substitute the conjugate of that. So V inverter minus Vg 
divided by j x m conjugate okay now we have to find the conjugate of this okay what's the conjugate of this guy so the conjugate of that guy will be just equal to okay so the inverter okay so the conjugate of this is just a minus of the imaginary part right since we have real numbers on top there so this can just be the minus of the imaginary part right okay so uh, we just have to change the sign of the j there that's the conjugate so if you have a plus j b so this is the z if you write a z conjugate this is just equal to what a minus j b okay so this is the conjugate just have to change the sign of what the imaginary part okay now let's proceed so this is v inverter minus vg okay so what's the conjugate of this this is just negative j x m okay now let us um, make uh, an expansion anyway okay so let's expand this so s is equal to v inverter times v inverter right minus v inverter okay times vg right the generator voltage this whole divided by what negative j x m okay now allow me to separate the two right into two fractions so the first one we are going to have v inverter this same as v inverter squared right isn't it okay this same as v inverter squared minus vg okay so this will be over negative j x m this will be vg times v inverter divided by negative j x m now remember that we said that v inverter in terms of um in rectangular form right because it's a phasor okay these are phasors right okay in rectangular form this is just equal to what v inverter cosine sigma plus j v inverter sine sigma right so let's make a substitution here now you notice that if you multiply this guy by itself right squared like this you just get the magnitude of the same thing because remember that if you multiply this okay if you multiply this what do you get you just get what the magnitude of the what the magnitude of the okay the voltage itself is squared okay so you can confirm that mathematically right so v in times cosine of that plus j v in okay times sine of that obviously what you're going to get is something like v n squared okay and then here inside the, about uh i think uh two cosine two uh, sine cosine two sigma plus j sine two sigma somewhere there so this you find that the, uh, this is the magnitude of the vector right and then what you have is uh, just a unit vector isn't it okay just a unit vector and all that so you see that okay mathematically you can just prove that okay when you multiply a vector okay by itself the end result just be the square of that vector the magnitude of that vector okay so here you don't have to waste much time on this because i'm playing by itself this just be equal to the magnitude of the same itself okay so vn beta squared right so that's the magnitude of this squared divided by negative j x m okay now um, here since we have two different vectors so we can just make the substitution properly right so um you have negative okay so this negative and this negative here can cancel them out make a positive right okay vg okay vg remember that vg is just the same because the angle is zero so this nothing is going to change so this is a magnitude or the amplitude of vg and then what of this one here this one remember we can make the substitution we say this one is simply the magnitude of what the inverter 
cosine sigma plus j the magnitude of what the inverter okay sine sigma why am i doing this here why did i do like the wide area for this one it's because here of two different voltages right two different vectors okay so i can write them in cartesian form okay so have two different vectors i can just write them in cartesian form all right and then divide by jxm so let's simplify this further so this is v inverter squared divided by so uh, okay hold on first negative jxm all right so now here let me just make a bit of expansion okay so this will be vg times v in right those are the uh, just the magnitudes of the voltages divide by jxm okay and then here plus vg okay times v in and then sine sigma okay remember this as j and also here divided by jx right so notice that here this j and this j can cancel them out okay so remain with what v in okay this is v inverter squared over negative j xm okay plus v g v inverter cosine sigma divided by jxm okay and then plus a for vg v inverter sine sigma divided by xm okay so here you can rationalize okay okay i'm going to do this i'm going to i'm apply both on top one down by the j right so to get rid of j in the denominator isn't it so you notice that for the first one for this one here i'm going to apply by negative j right for this one here i'm going to apply by j okay so that's what i'm going to do apply both both on top and down by okay so for now just like i said i'm going to apply both on top by this this be negative j okay v in beta and then squared over this negative j this negative j okay those guys who can j and j remember it's negative one okay okay so negative j negative j that's positive j squared right so j squared remember that's negative one okay so we're going to have a negative xm here right and then here i can also do the same multiplying both on top and down by j okay so j by j that is negative one and then here we have j vg v inverter cosine sigma i divide by j and j negative one so we have negative xm and then plus vg v inverter sine two sigma and then divide by xm okay so we can now rearrange this so the power is just equal to so i'll start with uh, the real part see so this is the real part right doesn't have j isn't it so this is vg okay v in sine two sigma divided by xm okay and then here what do you have this negative negative cancel out have positive right okay and then this negative way and that positive way you can divide those you're going to have negative over there right so this will be plus I can just factor out j since both of them have, have j's okay so this will be equal to v inverter squared divided by xm this becomes minus because of this minus right minus eh? vg v inverter cosine sigma divided by 
xm so this is the real part right this is the real power in watts real power right in watts this is a uh, reactive power okay so this is real power is as active power right okay this is the reactive power in e, var okay all right so that's the end that's, that's that's it right for the first part of the question so our power in watts is just equal to vg okay this is power for the inverter times v in beta and then it's sign e, two sigma okay divide by xm and then e, q okay so this is, remember that s is equal to is equal to what p plus jq right so our q in this case is equal to v okay v inverter squared over xm minus vg okay v inverter cosine sigma over xm okay so that's the end of the first part now let's look at part um part c so part c says um assume a lossless single phase by directional inverter is connected to an ac bus and a single phase generator set is also connected to the ac bus so just like i said here both of these guys are connected to the ac bus okay so both of these are connected to the ac bus as you can see here so now and because of that they'll be supplying power right to the load so we're given the load here the real portion of the ac load is 13 kilowatts so the load is 13 kilowatts okay the generator set supplies 10 kilowatts okay so the generator supplies 10 kilowatts the decoupling reactance we are given as this 0 0.5 ohms the generator voltage is 230 and the inverter voltage is 232 as you can see just like i said earlier that it, the inverter voltage has to be a bit higher than the generator voltage right okay so the generator voltage is actually okay it's already synchronized with what the ac bus but the, the generator for it to supply power to this ac bus okay need to meet those conditions frequency the voltage and all that right so you can say that okay this bus is actually at 230 volts right the bus is at 230 volts so the, the inverter has, is at 232 volt, volts so at it, the difference in the voltages okay will allow the current to flow okay so now let's uh see so compute the required power from the inverter and the associated angle so we can see that okay since the load is 13 kilowatts okay and the generator is supplying 10 kilowatts we know very well that okay obviously the inverter has to supply the remaining 3 kilowatts isn't it so the power that inverter you supply should be 3 kilowatts okay so it's part c so part c power of inverter will be equal to the load power minus what the generator power so the load power required is 13 kilowatts or the generator supplying 10 kilowatts so what remains is what the inverter you supply okay yeah so it's fits in the house and all that or maybe the this substation has maybe doesn't supply enough power then maybe they may decide to form a small substation somewhere or from with solar panels and all that so they can be able to supply the remaining three kilowatts so you need to make use of this inverter so that it's synchronized with the, the grid okay so that is what we have as three kilowatts right that's what you need to supply to that load so the load can be anything like community or anything right yeah now let's look at um the angle so we need to find the angle sigma right so since this is uh uh this one is actually active power right okay kilowatts so i have to use the equation for active power so we know that power is equal to vg or v inverter okay times vg right these guys right and then sign it where is two sigma coming from i'm sorry for this where is two sigma coming from this two sigma must be a mistake right okay 
that two sigma must be a mistake. Sorry for that. Okay. Sine sigma divided by x m, right? So what we need to for solve for is the sigma. So sine sigma is equal to p times x m. Okay. Divide by v e beta times v generate so let's substitute everything so the power is 3 kilowatts xm is 0 0.5 v inverter given is 232 the v generator is 230 okay so how much is that let me just grab my calculator here so this gives me about 0 0.0 281 somewhere there right now if you take the sine inverse of that so sigma will be equal to the sine inverse of that okay of zero process check first let me just grab my calculator so again where is that okay so 1000 times 0 0.5 divided by 232 times 230 okay and then uh, the sine inverse of the answer so it's about it uh, so the inverse of 0 0.0281 this is about equal to uh, 1.61 degrees okay that's the phase difference between the voltage of the generator and the voltage of the what the inverter and then part B, part B says uh, compute the reactive power from the inverter. So the, the, the other part is the part D. So the reactive power is Q. Q, remember that is given by this, right? Where is the equation for Q? So this is the equation for Q, right? So Q is simply V inverter squared minus V inverter VG. And then cosine sigma divided by xm over xm. So q is equal to 232 squared over 0 0.5 minus 232 times 230, which is a vg, divided by 0 0.5 cosine sigma, which is 1.61, right? Okay, so 232 squared over 0 0.5 minus 232 times 230 times cosine uh, 1.61 over 0 0.5. Okay, so it's about 97, right? So Q is equal to 97.13. Then it's what V A R. Okay, so this is it, the uh, reactive power. Okay, so this is the end of the video. Thank you for your attention.